Hey guys, Andy here. So Umidigi got in touch with me saying, did I want to try one of their phones? Um, I thought back and I thought, I've never tried an Umidigi before. I've known of them, I've seen them. Um, they're in that budget end of the sort of chinese phone market, I think, but I've never tried them. So they said, would you like to try the A7 Pro? I said, yeah, why not? So here it is. So it is in the budget end of things, it's £139 on Amazon. Um, so we do have to bear that in mind as we're talking about the device, it's not gonna match up to some of the other phones I've been reviewing recently. Um, as you just saw in the unboxing, it does come with a case, which is quite nice, it's quite grippy, quite a good texture. It also comes with a screen protector pre-applied, um, which I've left on. And then if we look at the actual hardware, it's actually quite nice, I would say. Sort of nice flat design, flat front and back. Uh, Rear-mounted fingerprint sensor, which is reliable, I would say. I don't think I really had any issues with that. Um, volume rocker on the one side with the power. On the other side is the SIM tray, which it does have dual SIM and micro SD card slot, so quite capable there. 3.5mm uh, headphone jack at the bottom with the solo speaker. And let's have a, a quick listen. So, I mean, that sounds okay. I'll just play some podcasts because to me that's the more important bit. I don't listen to music via the phone speaker, but I do make phone calls, listen to podcasts. And leave themselves vulnerable. So, I, like, it just the, the fact, or at least as the New York Times is reporting, you know, the people who are doing these hacks were between 19 and 21. I feel like you just don't have, or, or your perspective. Will... That's okay. It scored 90.3 on my, uh, my decibel test, which is okay. It's middle of the pack. It's loud enough that you could hear it. Um, the actual design, sorry, let's come back to that. So 8.5 millimeters thick. Uh, I will put the case back on it now. 212, actually no, I'll leave the case off. I don't need the case on it, do I? That's less. Uh, 212 grams in weight, so a reasonable weight. Comes in ocean blue and of course this one cosmic black. Um, I've mentioned the SIM tray. The hardware itself, the CPU is a MediaTek Helio P23. Now, while I don't really know much about the P23, I'm going to tell you it's a 16 nanometer chipset, which is quite thick. So, I mean, again, budget phone, um, Cortex A53 cores in it. Uh, GPU is an ARM Mali G71 MP2 700 megahertz. It's got four gig of DDR4 RAM, comes with either 64 gig of storage or 128 gig of storage. Now, it only geek benched uh, 759, which is not a lot. That's right down the bottom of my key. I've not been using Geekbench 5 for a long time, to be fair, so it's not much to compare it against, and I might not have done it against anything that's this sort of budget. Um, and in my notes, I did put initially, it's a little bit laggy, but then, I don't know, as I've been using it for a bit longer, my opinion's changed a bit. It's, it's reasonably, reasonably slick. It's not really much of an issue. I mean, it's not super fast, but it's okay. And we'll come to the software, obviously, in a moment. 
Um, gaming was pretty seamless. I played some uh, Mario Kart Tour and actually, yeah, there's no problem. I could play that, no worries at all. Uh, the screen itself, probably one of the stronger points of the device, I think. So it is a 6.3 inch IPS LTPS 2340 by 1080, which is 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio. Um, and generally it's quite nice. It's reasonably bright. It scored 528 lumens, which is sort of middle of the table, which is fine. But it generally seems quite sharp and crisp. There's reasonable viewing angles to it. Yeah, that's, that's quite a good screen on a budget device. Uh, then we come to the cameras. Reasonably simple software. There's not a lot of options along the bottom look. And then we've got a few different uh, sort of, we can go wide angle. You, see, you can see it being a bit slow, the device there, switching between them. Um, so we have a 16 megapixel primary f1.8 six element lens. We've got a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle. Um, we've got a five megapixel depth camera and we have a five megapixel macro camera. It says two centimeter macro distance. The front facing camera, 16 megapixel f2.0. I don't think they were that good pictures if I'm honest. The colors weren't very strong or at least they were just inconsistent. Um, they seemed even more faded when I used the macro camera. Uh, the detail didn't seem too bad in good conditions. Low light wasn't particularly great either. The selfie cam almost seemed better than the main camera. I don't think the, couple, the few pictures I saw that looked too bad. Portrait mode will only work on the rear lenses though. Um, video is possibly some of the worst I've seen in recent times. Um, the focus wobble or bounce or whatever you want to call it was really bad. Um, it was very unstable, it was rather grainy, low light. I mean, yeah, that just was not good. Um, the front facing wasn't particularly great and then I, I recorded a little bit to demo but the mic wasn't even that strong either. A quick test of the front facing camera on the Umida G A7 Pro and a chance to hear the microphone. As I'm out early on a Saturday morning, Sunny, uh, sunny so the camera is probably one of the weaker points. Uh, the software is actually stock Android. Whoa. Well, I can tell you it is Android 10. Um, how is it not in here? Now I had problems with the wireless update. So it came with version 1.0. The person that had sort of set the phone up for me had also said, oh, send me a screenshot of your um, version, which I did, said, oh, you've got update. I'm thinking, well, I've run updates and it's, you know, I've, yeah. And I realized it was downloading and applying, but then I was on the same version. So I had to manually download the ROM. I had to download um, an exe file that I'd run on my computer to then use, connected my phone to the computer and patch the ROM onto it. Proper old school. I don't feel like I've done that for four or five years. Um, I don't know if, I mean, I would hope they're going to fix because that's, I would not, or you could not expect somebody, a regular sort of user to go to that extent. It really was a bit of a pain in the bum, if I'm honest. But we got that. So the built-in launcher is actually all right. It's okay. And the gestures when you get the hang of them. So you've got the usual swiping from the sides. You've got the, now you have to be quite quick and sort of flingy almost when you do it. If I go too slow, I'm into app switch territory. So you do have to be quite quick. And that took a little bit of getting used to, because I mean, that wasn't particularly slow. I mean, I guess it was slow enough. But yeah, generally the gestures worked okay. It was as actually, as I think I said earlier, it was smooth, in, smooth enough. Um, third party launch, so I did put an over launcher on it, but then the gestures wouldn't work. So you had to use the buttons. And I thought, oh, I'll just stick with the start launch. It seems generally, it seems all right. It seems okay for my needs. Um, we move on to the battery, which is a 4,150 mAh Li Poly uh, battery. It does a 10 watt fast charge, which isn't particularly quick if we're honest. It is USB type C, which is good news. In my battery test, my hour long battery test, it came out with 91%, which is kind of mid table-ish. It's not a concern, but it's not, I mean, some of the better ones, to be fair, if I get like 94, I'm thinking, wow, is it a really good battery? I mean, there's a couple of devices, I think something's called 98 somehow, it's an hour long test. Um, so 91 is okay. 
It does seem to do quite well when the screen's off, but that could mean it's aggressive battery uh, RAM management, which lets it do that. I left it, I've been kind of using it in dual purpose with my main phone, so not entirely just that. And I've left it on my desk actually for about a day, and I came back to its 85% still the next day. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. It's, it, it lasted well with the screen off. Um, so I think in conclusion, the build quality is pretty good. The performance is okay. Uh, the battery is pretty good. The camera is terrible. Um, the screen is quite nice. So it's not, I think it's not a bad device for 139. There might be better out there for that price. Um, but if, if you're not wanting it for photography and pictures, yeah, you probably could go a lot worse than, than the UmiDigi A7 Pro. Not massive singing praise, but it's, it's a solid device. For that price, for £139, you have to have your expectations set. Um, and it's okay. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do check out some of the other videos on my channel. If you haven't already, please do make sure you subscribe. Thank you to my Patreons. Do consider um, contributing. Normally, I buy all my own devices. This is the first device I've been sent for a long, long time. Um, but yeah, do consider co contributing. That'd be great. But for now, my name's Andy. And I'll catch you all again soon.